Hi, welcome to a new episode, in the Internet Surfer, hosting the most horror, and creepiest stories, from Reddit. Please, don't forget, to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. What's that one story you've always wanted to tell, but no one has ever asked the right question? A friend from graduate school had previously been a skydiving instructor in Colorado and had jumped more than 600 times. One of these times, he for some reason, had his wallet in his suit, and it fell out. Fell to earth somewhere. He figured, this is odd, but oh well. Absolutely no chance of finding it. Separately, a man in rural Colorado was found murdered. Turns out in their remote cabin where he lived with his daughter. He had been abusing her, and she finally had enough and killed him. The police searched for the house and all of his property and found my friend's wallet in the trunk of his car. Police thought to themselves, the idiot murderer left his wallet in this dude's trunk damn easiest arrest ever. Friend had the super believable alibi of couldn't have been me officer. Actually, that wallet fell out of my pants while I was skydiving. This is my favorite story about my husband. For a little bit of context, my husband went to an Ivy League school. He's usually a very smart man. He and I take turns picking TV shows to binge on. Me. I want to pick Law and Order, SVU, Special Victims Unit, for my next show. Him. Uh, I don't know, it's not really my thing. Me what? You love crime shows. Come on, I love SVU. It's one of my favorite shows ever. Him. Completely incredulous, really? I've only seen one episode, but it was really weird. He eventually capitulated, and we started watching SVU. A few episodes in, he admits that he's enjoying it and that it wasn't what he thought it would be like. We watch a few seasons and finally get to an episode that starts like this, paraphrasing, Lady, I need to report a crime. My daughter is pregnant. Detective Stabler, how old is your daughter? Lady, she's 22. Stabler, well ma'am, your daughter is an adult, so she can file her own report. Lady, why don't you come to meet her? At this point, my husband says, so, this is the only episode I'd seen. Detective Stabler approaches the woman's daughter, who is looking down, her hair covering her face. I'm Detective Stabler, he says. The girl looks up. She has Down syndrome. My husband pauses the episode. So, because this is the only episode one have seen, and the show is called Special Victims Unit, I about weird myself laughing. He really thought there were hundreds of episodes of law and order dedicated to solving crimes against the handicapped. I love him, though. Okay, so I was never a sporty kid in school. I come from the country parts of Ireland, where everyone has thick accents, drinks Guinness, and most importantly, everyone loves football. Of course, I was an antisocial who never went outside, so I never learned how to play nor wanted to. So, one day in primary school, the teachers made us all play football. Since I didn't know how to play, I decided to just stand awkwardly near the goal and admire the scenery for the whole game. At one point, I became so absorbed in doing absolutely nothing that I pretty much blocked out the sound of everyone else's voices, so I had no idea how the game was going. Towards the end of the game, I was getting rather tired and was basically half asleep when suddenly this incredible pain hit my back. I fell over and I literally have no idea what just happened when suddenly some of the kids on my team went over to me and started cheering and saying, yeah, EGG, good job. I just kind of stood there for a moment before realizing what had just happened. Apparently, I had just accidentally blocked the opposition's winning goal by just standing there and doing absolutely nothing. My first and worst online date, the drunk and the baby. It's 2008, I'm 18, and I meet a girl on OkCupid. She's older than me, 25, educated and a bit alternative. We agreed to meet at a London pub for lunch at one in the afternoon, which is quite a journey for me, but I make it anyway. So she turns up a bit late with a baby in a baby carriage. I had no idea she had a kid before this, but I didn't have a problem with it. She doesn't address that I didn't know about her kid, but says she couldn't find babysitting. Cool. No problem. We both go up and order a drink separately and hang out and chat. We've been there for about two hours and she's gone up to the bar a whole bunch of times, mostly coming back with coffee and the occasional Coca-Cola. But then, quite suddenly, she falls forward onto the table 
and catches herself with her elbows and takes a big sigh and says, Oh man, I didn't mean to get so drunk. Air. What? I tell her I didn't realize that she's even been drinking, but she tells me that she's been having Irish coffees, rum and cokes as well as shots at the bar. So, at this point I start looking for an out, but she's becoming increasingly despondent, and her one-year-old is sad in his pram, so I can't leave in good conscience. I start encouraging her to get a taxi home, and she starts to cry, apologizing and saying that I must hate her. But shortly after she closes her eyes and will only respond in mumbles and groans. I try and get her to come around enough to get an address out of her which I can't. So I take her phone which wasn't password. 2008 non-smartphones. Most people didn't password their phone back then. Find a contact called mum and call it. I was hoping she could come and pick her up. But it turns out mum lives in the south of Spain. She isn't one bit happy to hear from me after I explain what happened. But presenting myself as a friend. Nonetheless, she gives me an address to get her to. I ask the bar to call me a taxi, which they do, and one of the bar staff take pity on me and help me get the woman, the baby, and the stroller into the cab. I was about to give the driver money for the trip and see them off, but I realized that was a bad idea because who knows what would happen? So, I get in the taxi to go take her home, holding a baby the entire way, which I've never done in my life at that point. Turns out the driver is a stand-up bloke, and I explain what has happened, and we have a laugh about it. When we get there, he even assembles the pram for me as I take her and place her on her doorstep. I find her keys and get her door open, at which point some guy pops his head round the corner from the kitchen and asks, Who are you? I tell him my name and that I'm a friend and ask who he is. He says he's her fiancé. Oh! He's pretty angry that I've gotten his fiancé with his child drunk in the middle of the day. After getting the pram through the door, he begins to carry her up the stairs, and he says to me, you stay right there. You and I need to have a little chat. Nope. As soon as he turns the corner at the top of the stairs, I turn and make a run for it, jump back in the taxi, who I asked to take me to the nearest tube station. Afterward, I needed some catharsis, so texted some friends who were locals and went out properly. And the kicker? On the train home that night, I got a text message from her. Had a lovely time. Can't wait to see you again. I block her number and never hear from her again. Went on date. Date turns up with child and gets drunk without my knowledge. I drag her back to hers to make sure she's safe, only to find she also has a fiancé who is less than pleased to see me. Got electrocuted on my first day of high school. I was in a jazz band class that met before first period. Awkward teenager me new to high school and not great at bass guitar. The electric guitarist asks me to hold his guitar while he grabs some sheet music I hold my bass in my left hand while grabbing his guitar with my right. The building we were playing in was built sometime in the 60s, and I guess it had some sort of faulty wiring. The next few things happened probably within two or three seconds. I instantly felt a weird sensation through my arms and chest, and my arms were visibly shaking. I remember trying to let go of the guitars right away, but my hands only gripped harder. Electrical stimulation caused all my arm muscles to contract at once. I remember hearing loud feedback from both amps, and when I let out a sort of yelp, it sounded like a loud, distorted version of my voice coming from the amps. Everyone else just heard the feedback, Odo. I passed out, briefly saw some popping blue lights, and woke up on the floor with blood all over my face and in my ear. Apparently, what everyone else saw was me vibrate and faint into my amp and onto the floor. My band director, late 50s, apparently moved like lightning to unplug the amp and probably save my life. When I woke up, I noticed the blood in my ear first, and my first thought was that I had some sort of inner ear damage. It turned out I just smacked my face on the knobs of the amp on my way down. I tried to sit up, but my teacher told me to stay still until the ambulance arrived. Then I noticed all my classmates and sisters, same class, looking pale and staring at me. The nurse came in and let me sit in a chair. I was holding a towel to my face when my mom burst into the room. Apparently, my sister had called her, and her mom instincts took over. She U-turned back toward the school, drove across some part of a lawn, and made it there before the ambulance. She insisted on driving me to the hospital where I got some face stitches and did some tests, but otherwise it ended up fine. Really, the worst part about the experience was not getting any superpowers. The whole band wrote a get-well card full of puns about being shocked to hear the story. Also. Both guitars were miraculously undamaged. I accidentally stole a car. I had just gotten off work. 
I was working two jobs at the time, and I got barely any sleep. I walked out and got into my car, started it up, and started driving home. I didn't realize something was wrong until I couldn't find my AUX cord. And then I started realizing that there were things in the car that were not mine, like the child seat in the back. I was an 18-year-old with no kids. I flip a U-turn and bust back to work to hopefully get the car back before its owner notices it gone. I didn't. Cops were there, and I was very quickly arrested. The owner dropped charges only after three things were done. One, I showed my unlocked keys and started her car. Then pointed to my car, which was the same model, color, and year. Two, one of my coworkers vouched for the fact that the customer parked in the spot I almost always parked in. Three, camera footage was pulled for the past nine days. I had work showing that seven of those days I parked in that spot, and the other two I parked close to it. Edit. Yell, the police officers were doing their job and were polite about it because I cooperated. And the owner was right to be angry. I was a punk kid who had just stolen her car in her eyes. Or at least took it out for a joyride. The owner was a single mother and wasting any of her gas could have meant sad things. Please stop saying they were weird. This happened to my grandfather. He went to the supermarket, walked to his car, unlocked it, started it, drove off. Pulling into the street, he realized this wasn't his car. His cheeses were missing, the smell wasn't right, the interior wasn't quite right. He pulled back into the lot and saw his own vehicle, just a couple spots down from where he got into the wrong car. Same make and model, remarkably similar but slightly different. He was excited about and interested in what had just happened and waited for the owner of the other slash wrong vehicle to exit the store. When that guy arrived, Granddad told him what had happened. Hey, I accidentally drove your car. He went to demonstrate that his own key would unlock and start this dude's car. Nothing happened. His key no longer worked. The guy just stared at Granddad like he was crazy or stupid. The end. Reminds me of the time when two years ago, by now I think, I was trying to go through an area pretty dense with trees slash dead bushes. There was no reason for me to go there, I was just exploring. So, since there were a lot of bush branches... At head level, I had to move them manually with my hands each time so I could pass. I move one of them, but I stop holding it sooner than I should, and he acts like a coiled spring. In an instant, the branch was stuck right between my eyelid and eye. I don't remember feeling any pain, and I didn't feel anything while removing it either. My eye did itch for a couple of minutes afterwards, but that was it. The funny part is that I was wearing glasses, and it still somehow managed to fit through the gap between my eye and glasses. Eight. I once got beer using a McLaurin ID from the movie Superbad. I was 20 from the US, so I'm still underage. I was on a business trip and was waiting for my flight when I decided to get dinner at one of the airport restaurants. The server asked me what I'll have to drink, and I asked what's on tap because why not. I ordered a Corona, but she asked for my ID. So, I handed her my McLaurin ID. Best $4 I've ever spent. She looks at it, smiles, and says, okay, and comes back with my beer. The cherry on top was when she came back a couple minutes later with another beer and gave it to me for free, saying she had accidentally poured an extra. That was the best moment of my otherwise uneventful and vanilla life. Fogel forever. I was a huge slacker in high school. I wouldn't read reading assignments. I'd cheat on assignments and tests. I didn't do assignments if I didn't feel that the grade was worth the time, etc. Most of my teachers were aware of my laziness and a few of them rightfully, suspected the cheating aspect as well. My friend was the same way. In my Spanish one class, we had Spanish nicknames just for fun. Mine was Tomas, and my friend's was Josue. This was the last period of each day, and our teacher would let us out before the bell would ring if we were to finish class early. For each chapter in our textbook, we'd be given an assignment to make flashcards on which one side would be one of the chapter's vocabulary terms, and the other side would be the English translation. Easy assignment, right? Well, it was worth such a few points that I couldn't be bothered to ever do it anyway. To grade them, she'd walk up and down the aisles between the desks, check for the stack of vocabulary cards, and move on to the next student. Nothing too thorough. It's the end of the period and we're ready to leave early as usual, which she said that we could do after she checks our cards. She goes to check Josue's cards, and he actually has them done. I'm stunned just as much as she is. As she continues up the aisle and with her back turned, Josue passes me his cards. As she approaches me, she asks, Tomas, do you have your vocabulary cards? Without even looking at me, expecting me to say no. 
Yes, ma'am. I respond, flashing the cards at her. She looks baffled. She knows that something is up. Josue, where are your cards? Oh, I put them away, Mrs. Reyes. Do you mind pulling them out and showing them to me again? As Josue reaches underneath his desk for his binder, he of course doesn't say anything. But he doesn't have to. His facial expression says it all. I neither want to screw over my friend, nor want to get caught cheating. How severe would the punishment be? Our friend Jamie is eager to have his cards checked so that he can leave early. Completely unaware of what's going on, Jamie walks up to Mrs. Reyes from behind and asks if she'll check his cards. She turns around and as she checks his cards, I give Josue his cards back. How do I get us out of this predicament? Mrs. Reyes turns around and sees Josue with his cards. She then looks to me and asks, Tomas now, where are your cards? Uh, I threw them away, I sheepishly answer. She gives me the all-too-familiar look of disappointment and asks, Why would you do that? I continue, let's be honest. You and I both know that I won't use them anyway. Well, go get them and show them to me, please. This is it. We're about to get caught cheating. Is there a way out of this? I walk to the trash can, brainstorming what to do when I get to it and don't have any cards to show her. Do I shamelessly act like they're suddenly missing from the trash can? Do I cut it and try the honesty route? I don't know. I continue to the trash can and am flabbergasted at what I find. A stack of the chapter's vocabulary cards, sitting neatly on top. No way. I bring them back to my desk and show them to her. She looks at Josue and he flashes his cards to her as well. With a surprised tone, she says, I'm sorry that I ever doubted you too. She continues checking others' cards and my friend whispers, Whose cards are those? Dude, I have no clue. The next day, I told Jamie about what happened. He asks, You know what's funny? What? Those were my cards. I threw them away on my way out of class. Those cards were there for only seconds and he had no idea that I needed him to put them there. What are the odds? TLDR, I lied about doing a homework assignment, cheated to get a grade for it, lied about throwing it in the trash, got called out for the lie, and found somebody else's homework assignment in the trash to prove that I was telling the truth. Sixth grade, I had hit a major growth spurt so most of my clothes didn't fit and my family couldn't afford new ones. Once winter came, the only jacket I had that I could still fit and even a bit was much too thin to be of any use. My teacher noticed, and I walked into class one morning to see a big, fluffy winter coat on the back of my chair and a chicken soup for the soul book on my desk. Her kindness still makes my eyes water, even almost two decades later. Ms. Robertson, if you're reading this, thank you. I never forgot. Edit, I really never thought I'd say this, but RIP inbox. I posted this late to the thread and thought it would get buried. Didn't think I'd get more than 20 updates and especially not gold. To answer some frequent questions. This was in the Phoenix, Arizona area, and I've tried to get in touch with her since, but I don't remember her first name, and she doesn't work at the school anymore. My first reaction was to hesitate. I thought maybe someone had come in early to do homework or be tutored or something and left their stuff, but she saw my hesitation and ushered me over to my seat. I've gotten more than a few comments about how it's an amazing thing that she did so, especially on a teacher's salary, and I agree. It wasn't an inexpensive coat, and I wore that thing until I literally couldn't anymore. My cat went missing one eye. We back up to a large farm with tobacco and cornfields, and I suspected he was out there. He was. So I would go out onto the farm late at night to see if he would come to me when it was quiet and peaceful. He would not. I had to catch that jerk in a hoverboard trap after 15 days. I'm out there one night because the moon is full and visibility is better than usual, although it's still a cornfield at midnight, so pretty dark. I was pretty close to one edge of the cornfield, with my back to the fence separating it from the next farm over. It was eerie being out there. If you were still, you could hear a thousand mice scuttling around in the corn, all around you, and the weird creaking sound corn makes, and the rustling of the leaves, and that's all. Except then I heard a footstep behind me. I paused. I didn't hear anything. I was so sure it had been a footstep. I walked forward. There was again, 20, 30 feet behind me. One soft but distinct footfall. I was unarmed, a girl, alone in a cornfield, being followed. It was pretty much the dumbest I've ever felt. I was like, wow, I'm about to be murdered while looking for my stupid cat. And then I clutched my flashlight close, took a deep breath, 
and turned around suddenly. There were about 15 horses standing there just on the other side of the fence, staring at me. When I turned the flashlight on them, they scattered like cockroaches and thundered back to their barn. I guess they had noticed me creeping through the field next door, and they all crept over to see what I was up to in near total silence. I swear, all I heard out of all those horses before they galloped away was two small footsteps. I live in a small rural town. When I was seven, my parents let my older sister and I ride our bikes about 3.5 miles into town to get lunch at the only restaurant in town which my mom's cousin owns. I didn't realize how long 3.5 miles was and was hot and tired and crabby and burned my tongue on my burger, so I threw a fit and refused to ride my bike home. A stranger overheard my sister and I arguing about this and offered me a ride home. He said he could just put my bike in the back of his truck and everything would be fine. My sister agreed because she didn't want to have to call my parents to come pick us up and she was tired of my whining and also she was 10 years old and dumb. I realized on the drive home that I hadn't given the man directions or told him my name, but he somehow knew my name and where I lived. He dropped me off at home, helped me put my bike in the garage, and then drove down the road to go visit my grandparents. It turns out, the man was my grandpa's brother, one of 12 siblings. He recognized me because I looked just like my mom did at that age. I had been working a job under the table and was let go. They gave me a month's pay in cash as severance. I was in shock and not having internet at the time. This was in dinosaur times before iPhones. Went to a local internet cafe downtown, run by the same company that runs EasyJet, actually, to update friends and family on what happened. As I'm typing, I notice someone in my peripheral vision crouching down by my chair. I like to think the suddenness of having lost my job is why it takes a minute for it to click. I look down, and my backpack is missing. I turn and see the guy heading upstairs to the ground floor and the exit. Not really thinking things through, I tear after the guy. I get to the top of the stairs and see him walking outside and have a moment of panic that he's going to hand my bag off to an accomplice. But no, I managed to catch up to him. And again, not really considering how badly this could backfire, grab him and start yelling at him. Fortunately, he didn't have a weapon, which was extremely lucky for me. Instead, he silently gave me back my bed and then just walked away up the street. I was so publicized up on adrenaline that I just stood there shaking for a while before I went back inside to finish. When I got back to the chair, I double-checked that my personal stuff, like a digital camera, was still there because I had heard sometimes they'll snake what they can from at first in case they get caught. Fortunately, everything was there, including the envelope with my severance in it. I had totally forgotten about it up until that point. It was basically the only time I have ever carried that much cash on me, almost $2,000, and it happened to be the day I was almost robbed. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.